What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. After Sound here, bringing you Splinterlands content every single day. We also stream right here in this channel every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday morning. So come by and say hello. All right, I wanted to talk about Chaos Legion packs because we have quite a few still remaining, circulating around that are unopened, and uh, the price has become quite uh, quite sad, <laughs> in my opinion. Right? They're trading for about a buck twenty. Uh, USD on Hive Engine, as you can see here, and we have over 3 million, which is like 20% of the initial supply, 15 million that is circulating. So we did burn 2.5 million, or a little bit more than 2.5 million. We have a bunch more open. Obviously, a lot of what is circulating now, a, a good chunk of it is held by the team and is being given out as rewards, but ultimately, we just, we have an oversupply. Now, I know that I people probably think that I contradict myself when I say I still don't think that we should have burned everything. I was against the pack burning when it happened. Uh, people voted for it. So, of course, I got in line. That's what the community wanted. So we did it. And the main reason is because I still believe even now that there won't be enough cards when new players come in. And I, I want to be very specific about that because... The way that I see it, and I think everybody here, if you're a part of this project, you do believe that there will be a wave of new players that come in, and when those new players do come in, there won't be enough cards, and so at least specifically for Chaos Legion. Now, when it comes to new players coming in with the expectations that we have, and for that to be outside of a traditional bull run, what we run into is the chicken and the egg problem. And what I mean by that is players want to come in and they want to see asset values rising, right? That's that's when people get excited about projects. They see the asset values going up and therefore they want to get in, store their, store their uh, wealth, store some value in there. And ultimately, we saw a lot of that in the 2021 bull run. Again, a lot of that was hype. A lot of that was FOMO. A lot of that was really unwarranted. Uh, but ultimately, that is what people look for when it comes to a project. And that is how you get a massive amount of people to rush into something that is crypto or NFT based. So here's the situation. We have a, a dropping floor on the pack prices and players, therefore, not interested. So in order to get the players, you need the asset prices to rise. But in order for the asset prices to rise, we need new players to come in and, and take it. So there, therefore, we have that chicken and the egg problem, at least when we are discussing cards. So where I'm, I'm going with this is one of the reasons why there is such a huge focus on the tokenomics is because another way that you could incentivize people to come into the game is through asset prices rising outside of cards, right? So what do we have? There's land, there's validators, there's titles, there's all these things. The main one that I would say would be the governance token, which is SPS, which is just, you know, at this point, bleeding, bleeding its way down to, to two cents. I'm actually surprised that it's still above two cents because, again, I, I, this is not me being bearish, but there's no utility or use case right now. And we know that utility or use case is not going to come in until after land. So to all the people who are buying it right now, keeping it above two cents... Oh, great job. We appreciate you. Thank you for holding the floor. Um, but ultimately, when we look at this, and, and one of the reasons why I think it's important for the team to focus on tokenomics, because a lot of times, everybody, you know, the, I don't want to say everybody, but a, a good part of the community looks at this and says, well, we need more features, we need more game modes. And I'm not saying that we don't, it'd be great if we could do everything at the same time. But in order to really bring in the masses that do want to participate in in a Web3 game, and I'm very specific about that, because as a game, Splinterlands, it's it's really difficult for any of these Web3 games to compete with Web2 games, right? So from a feature standpoint, from a gameplay standpoint, the polish, the everything, just it's it's not there. You cannot compete. So the competitive competitive advantage is the tokenomics. And Matt actually lined this up or outlined this in uh, one of his posts on the yabamat.sps account. And I very, very much agree with it. So when we look at this and, you know, the great burning that's happening, we look at all of the uh, different tokenomic tweaks that the team has made over time, I'm in full support of it. Obviously, I want to see new game modes, and I think wherever we pivot to after land will hopefully add those different game modes, those different features, those avenues for current players to really enjoy and for new players coming in, like the slow trickle of people who are ex uh, exploring crypto games uh, right now, 
for those people to see a game that is worthwhile, that is being actively developed and, uh, you know, growing essentially in the bear market, which Splinterlands, the company is doing a good job of, right? Maybe not with Splinterlands, the game itself, but you see a lot of partnerships coming in, GL, uh, the GLG game, GLS platform, Arcade Colony, Chibi Dinos. There's a lot of cool things that the team has in the works. And ultimately, that may not come back as a direct benefit for SPS holders or for Splinterlands players, but having the Splinterlands team right, the company being in a healthy place will ultimately be best for the game, right? Especially if over the last six months, everybody keeps asking about runway and how much longer can the team survive. What you want is for the team to be healthy because at, at, at the end of the day, this is this is their baby. And just in, in listening to Matt on Town Halls, this is the game that he wants to grow. He wants to create an awesome, uh, you know, Web3 type of game with, with Splinterlands, right? So um, I'm kind of digressing there. My main thing was going back to the, the packs, right? So we got 3 million packs here. I personally don't think that we're going to see uh, us eat through that anytime soon. We've seen a lot of players leaving the game. We've seen a lot of bots, botting accounts leave the game. Therefore, they're selling whatever assets that they can. And really, the only value that you can extract immediately from rewards would be packs because of the fact that SPS comes in staked uh, and the cards are, reward cards are now soulbound. So when it comes to what land can do, and this is why I'm excited about land 1.5, is if we can get the flywheel going, if we can get a little bit more scarcity with DEC so that we start burning some SPS and then combine that with the SPS staking that should come in around that time or maybe shortly afterwards, that's where I can see a potential rise in the asset prices, specifically SPS, maybe land, right? I don't, there, there's a lot of cards out there, so I don't know that people are going to be rushing to open Chaos Asian cards. I think people are going to go and buy all of the one cent common, you know, reward cards or the, the, the super cheap common reward cards as they are right now, because there's still a ton of them out there. So we won't be opening packs for land, but what we can do, hopefully, fingers crossed, right? This is my most optimistic scenario, is that if we can get to a place where where we get DEC back to and even above its peg value because of the demand that land brings, because of the demand that maybe guild buildings bring, uh, maybe a battle pass, maybe new game modes, all that stuff that may happen over the summer and maybe even into you know deep into Q3, like August, September. I, I'm hopeful that what we will see from that is a rise in the price of SPS. Now, this is not a prediction. This is a hope, right? This is <laughs> this is optimism. I have no idea where it's going to go, but we do know that utility is coming down the line. We do know that utility is coming for DEC down the line with land, with SPS for staking, and whatever other cool things that the team might be planning over the next, we'll just call it six months. Uh, yeah, six months or like throughout the rest of the year. So if we can get SPS to go up, do a couple of multiples. I mean, even SPS going to eight or 10 cents, that's a four to 500% gain. And trust me, when people start to see that, Gala jumped up, Gala did a 100% jump and everybody got on the Gala train. Obviously, that was just for one quick announcement and then things have died down since then. But if Splinterlands can actually get stick the landing when it comes to creating that scarcity and creating demand with the player base it currently has. That is the important thing because the player base has dwindled down so much. So if we can get to a point where we can create scarcity even within the current player base, that asset prices start rising because we all want this stuff, specifically SPS, right? We all want or we all need it. That is when we could get some newer players in. So this is why I don't think we'll see Rebellion until 2024 sometime. And when it comes to Chaos Legion packs, I don't think there will really be a demand until we can start to get a larger amount of players to come in and check out the game. And if you follow that line of thinking, it's only going to be once we can get SPS up, right? Once we can burn enough DEC and get people to start burning SPS, buying SPS off the market and burning it, getting that to go up to attract people into the game because they see asset values rising for those that are actually scarce. So I know I was a little bit all over the place. I want to talk mainly about Chaos Legion packs, but hopefully going into why land, why SPS staking, why SPS in general can be what helps Chaos packs in the short, medium, um, probably not short, but medium to long term. And when I say medium to long term, I'm thinking like six months between now and the end of the year. That's kind of where my head is at. Now, if we get some kind of promo pack, obviously that'll be more inflation for cards. Uh, it could be cool depending on what the partnership is. But right now, my focus is just on watching 
what the appetite is for chaos legion packs because that is currently what's flooded on the market and in my opinion i'm hoping that land will not directly need the cards from chaos legion packs but will provide the scarcity for dec and sps that brings people in because they see uh you know dec staying at or above peg and sps going up in value but that's kind of how i see things playing out hopefully over the next six months as long as the team continues to deliver develop and deliver and can stick the landing on a lot of their uh, upcoming projects but overall that's that's those are my thoughts would love to hear your feedback on that or your perspective Otherwise, I'll catch you all in the next video and see you around the game. Have an amazing rest of your day. Take care.